All right, welcome to the Bonto Boys podcast. You, it's funny because it feels good to finally have Patrick not be behind the camera. He's here. <laughs> yeah, they, they, that's the that's the manager. Let me tell you something, you have to do. Patrick be scheming off the top. Me and me and Julian be working ten cents on the dollar. He's skimming. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, off the top. Ten cents. That sounds like too much. I, yeah, I know. Oh. I know. I know. Right. Oh. I know. Right. Hold it down. Hey, look, he's going to be the, the Kogalese uncle that steals all the money from us. In 20 years, he'll be at, like, his daughter's wedding. Or somebody will punch him. Go get him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Julian, hold him up. Yeah, yeah. Julian, hold him up. Hold him up. You know, the, 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 there it is. There it is, Julian. There it is. Muyibie. Muyibie. There it is. So we're here, the Bonto Boys podcast. We're now under like certain circumstances because, yo, this is unprecedented. So I hope everybody's okay, healthy. Yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah, this is, you know, this is this is our time of like history. You know, this is who I called you. Like, this is our time. Like, 100 years from now, they'll be like, what happened in the, the 2020s? It was like, oh, the, the coronavirus. You know what I mean? Coronavirus. So, yeah, so today we have a special. Well, you know, I'm Blake Oisa. Go ahead and introduce you yourself, um, Patrick Julian, then we'll get to our special guest. You know, you go first. You go first, manager. Come on. Ah, nah, man. I'm in the background. Don't do your thing. Do your thing. You want right, to well, Yeah, you go ahead, Julian. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, so my name is Julian Chikuna, mm -hmm. uh, stand up comedian, you know, pursuing acting on the side too. And um, we on the band two boys, Bileko and I uh, meet last year yes, at sir. the Ice House Comedy Club. Yep. Uh, after doing a. Uh, an open mic, just noticed I had an accent oh. and he was wondering where I was coming from. So uh, I told him, uh, listen, I'm, I'm African. He's like, yeah, but Africa is great, you know, it's big. So where in Africa? So I told him, yeah, from the Congo, DRC. No shit. I'm also Congolese. So from, from there, we just, you know, we connect a little bit and then... Um, Let me tell you something. This guy's a piece of work. Let me tell you what he did. <laughs> He doesn't remember. <laughs> look, you have to look, look, you guys, you have to too. He said, I'm from Central Africa. I said, What's Central Africa? I said, Central Africa Republic? Or whatever. And he said, I'm from the Congo. Then I started speaking Lingala. He said, Eh, he didn't think there was any Congolese people in LA. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, he had yeah, no idea. He, he had no idea. You, you, you think speaking Lingala, it's kind of, you know, I mean, like, you <laughs> <laughs> you, no, he threw me two or two or three worlds. And yeah. I get it, you know? I said, that's how Congolese. That's how Congolese. Hey, look, I'm losing confidence right now. But <laughs> seriously, though. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, man. Seriously, it though. Out. seriously, though, that got me very excited because, you know, like, uh, I, I've never met, you know, a, a one of my people before. So I was, like, so excited, especially in the comedy circuit. Yeah. And uh, from that point, I say, you know what? There's something we have to do, you know? And, yeah. Uh, and we we saw each other again, like what a month after that. Yeah, a month after that, we're at the we're all we were waiting at the uh, not ice improv. house, the uh, improv, improv. improv. Right. I was like, all right, we got to do something because we both didn't get up, and it was like yeah. one o'clock in the morning. It was ridiculous. Yeah, and uh, from there, you know, like this is that was it. Like we have to do something. There's something, you know. We both yeah. uh, we have Congolese heritage. Uh, look, so I'm gonna have to go to Europe. To go back to Europe, and then when I'm back, let's try to do something down, and um, and from there, let's see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. So now we're here, and then uh, yeah. of course, like when me and Julie were like, let's work, then we brought in. I was like, who's more more equipped to like be a part of this? And Patrick was always coming around, so in like doing photography, always showing support. And I was like, I think Patrick would be perfect. So voila, now we're here. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um, I guess to get to our special guest, this guy is, he's one of my business partners. He's my cousin. Like, I'm, you know, people say, oh, is that cousin and guy? Like, and yeah. they're not really a cousin. No, this guy's really my cousin. Like, his dad and my mom are cousins. Like, this okay. guy, yeah, yeah, like, he's a cut, like, somebody I, like, he was one of the first people that came from Kin to LA. So he was one of, like, the first, no, 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 he was second because Patrick, your dad was, like, one of the, no, wait, wait. Hey, wait, Patrick, does, was your dad here with his dad? Possibly. What's your dad's name, Patrick? Uh, Tonton Antoine. 
Oh, v- hey, V Antoine. Yeah, V Antoine's an OG too, bro. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. So like it, it's it's amazing. Like you're always like one away here, or whatever, right? So um we're here with Tatool, the Dr. Tatool Nintoya. Hey. Uh, hey. We're gonna talk about our business CEO Ken. Where um uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about CEO Ken. So yeah, yeah, to too. Uh first of all, thank you for being a part of this. I wish it would have been under different circumstances or whatnot. Oh, you know what I mean? <clears throat> but you know, we're here. Matter of fact, this is this isn't the first podcast we'll have you on. This is just the starting, you know what I'm saying? Because as you progress, we want you to keep coming back and talk about like our progress in this business. So introduce yourself, sir. Oh wait, hold on. Uh to not to cut you off, just one second, because there's yes, a, sir. there's buzzing from someone's uh Mm. It might be on your end, Blake. I'm not sure. It may be let from me, your setup. Let me see. Because um, let me move you for a second. Let me try to. Okay. Okay. I think it's coming from your end, Blake. Because when I muted your mic, I'm not hearing the noise. Anymore. Yeah, that's right. That's I don't right. know if it's maybe the Bluetooth setup of yours. I don't know. Is there like a cable you can use to uh, connect it to your laptop? You know, it's funny. I'm actually on. Uh, oh, I have. Wow. Yeah, but I could I could get a black Bluetooth. It. You know what the Bluetooth is? You just or, use your your the mic on your off your computer. Yeah, I think it's a feedback from your computer to your. Okay, well, how about or, headphones? Yeah, try it without the headphones. Like, take the headphone jack out. Because I mean, for this, it it should be good. Just the the, the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I saw you guys with headphones, so I was like, oh, let me let me be cool with the guys, but forget it. All yeah, right. I, I think that'll work. Multitasking in here. Oh, excellent. Good. 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 Ça va? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. And just uh, a heads up, the, the way this thing is set up, Zoom, it cuts off around 40 minutes. When that happens, I'll just restart it, and you guys have the link. Just hop on again, and we'll okay. keep going from there. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have to introduce yourself, please. So, hey, everyone. My name is Dr. Tutun Toya, and, you know, like, like Junior said, we're, we're related. We're cousins. I've known, I know, I've known Junior since he was, like, I don't even know. I, he could barely talk, so I've, I've known him ever since then it's really cool to see kind of his maturation and kind of where he's going uh he's 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 about to take that the mantle of the hardest working congolese person in the business because he's he's out here you know he's out here he's doing things so i'm I'm really excited that you guys have me on here and um so i uh i i'm an educator i started teaching in 2000 i went to first of all i went to college on oregon play basketball mm-hmm. played basketball through high school uh, didn't get a scholarship out of high school, so I went to junior college here at PCC, and I got a scholarship to the small NAIA school, Oregon Institute of Technology, which is a tech school. I want to be a bio major, but I went to a tech school, but they had my major, mm-hmm. uh, environmental science, so I went there, came home, didn't know what I was going to do with myself. My brother was like, you should probably get into teaching. I was like, eh, teaching, whatever, and then I met up with some friends of mine, and they're like, yo, you make a great teacher. There are not a lot of black male educators in the field. You should do it, and this was back in 2000. I was like, cool, so I did it, got my credential, been teaching. Um, I taught up until like 2010, and got out of the classroom, became an administrator, and funny story, I was getting laid off from one of my one of my ad- admin jobs. As, as I was getting laid off, I applied to USC for the doctoral program, sure. and I learned that I got laid off. And then two weeks later, I got into the program. So hey. that, I think yeah, I think that was that was a blessing. So it kind of it kind of um, helped the load a little bit. That was it wasn't so heavy, yeah. and I went got my doctoral degree at, at USC, and now I'm doing some consulting work with with schools around STEM and STEAM education. And that's one hat. And my other hat is an entrepreneur and mm. looking for ways to um, just kind of run my own show and be an entrepreneur and, and also find ways to help out our community. You know, how do I impact our community? And that's how this whole thing, CEO King got started. How do we, how do we impact the community in a positive way? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's funny. I didn't, I didn't know that about the layoff and then two weeks later to, it's funny because everybody always thinks like when you go through this, the higher education, they always think like, oh, it's just like a smooth sailing. Like, oh yeah, he did this four years, three and a half years. And then he just went in and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, rest is history. They don't know about all the failures you go through and all the gaps you go through to get to this. I have no oh, idea. Yeah, man. I, I, call myself, I call myself crying driving on Venice my first year in grad school. 
because it was just so hard. I was crying. I, some song came on, the tears started coming out of my eye. It's like, man, this shit is so hard. I hate school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have no idea, man. This stuff is so hard. They had the graduation. Everyone was a patch on the back. You did it. You did it. What took you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people don't see the journey, you know. They just see the the end the end result, and you're on TV, you're 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 hosting shows, you're you're on the couch with Oprah and these people. They don't see like no. everything that led up to that. No, no. They, have, they, have, they have no idea. So yeah. you said you wanted to you were, you you have a besides education, you work on um, entrepreneurship. So can you t- explain to people how we came up with CEO Ken? I'll give you my version. You give you um, you can give the, um, your version. So I don't know if you remember this, Junior, but you, um, we, haven't, we haven't talked in a while. Yeah. And we met up at, at Felicia's party. I think, Patrick, mm-hmm. you were there too. We, we met up at Felicia's party, and we, we were talking here and there. And I invited you over to the house. So yeah. You came over, and you were t- we were talking. And right before you came over, Carly and I, my wife, we were talking about, like, how do we get involved in the Congolese community? How do we impact it? You know, is there, should we set up a Congolese school? What should we do? So when you came over, we started talking about it. And we're like, yo. And then you brought it up. You said, yo, it'd be cool if we had like a Congolese school. Because there's no Congolese schools. You're real passionate. I'm like, yo, me and Carly were talking about the same thing. Like, what do we, how can we get a school or something going in the community? Mm-hmm. And this, that, and the other. And, um, and then we... And then we didn't talk again for a little bit. And me and Carly kept talking about the school. We're like, yo, what do we do? Why don't we do like a like a program, like a boot camp for businesses, you know, for Congolese businesses or people, Congolese people who want to maybe start a business or people who have businesses. And then you came back over and we were talking and I was like, yo, what about this? And you're like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And we started hashing it out. Why don't we do a thing? And then that's pretty much, and it was so funny because we talked about it. You whipped out your, uh, your, your laptop and you started typing. Like, yeah. We're about to do this. And it's, it's weird. You have to do, and Patrick and Julian, please chime in like, you know, I started to realize once we started, I always had this idea of us like having like a school because I remember going to like the Congolese church and I was like, wait, 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 there's all these Congolese kids here. And my biggest thing was Lingala. I just wanted to, I just wanted to always be able to speak Lingala, right? Right. Because it's like, okay, well, if you can't afford to go home every six months, I was like, we need a place where we can teach the kids how to speak their language. And my biggest thing really was for us to speak our own language, but then we know me, we, me and Patrick, we grew up here in the state. So it's like my American friends that were interested. I was like, hey, you guys can learn an African language. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. And then and, and keep, keep people involved because I'm going to be for real when one of our cousins died, you know, uh, I don't want to say his name, but one of us uh, died. I felt so bad because when he died, he was around my age, 34, 35. He died 31, 32. I remember the last time I saw him, he felt like, it felt like he was alone. And I was like, nobody should ever feel alone if you have a community, right? Yeah. So I always thought like, yo, if we're able to do something where we can like create some type of community, some bond, it gets people to feel more pride and be have more confidence or whatever, right? So I just remember us talking about that. And then when you're like, hey, we need to start like something with business, because one thing that would kind of bother me is I would see in other communities, hey, man, this person sells rice. We go to him for rice. This, this auntie sells shirts we go to her for shirts and i was like hey man like everybody's doing something but nobody's doing it together does that make sense yeah. so that's one reason why we came up with ceo like ken and um how do you like in patrick and julian how do you guys like feel like especially like julie how is it in, in growing up in europe do you feel that sense of community or lack of community and patrick how do you see it in los angeles since you know we grew up here oh uh patrick oh uh-huh. Yeah, and so I go ahead. Um, so I grew, up, I grew up in you know in Europe, and uh, over there the community is like the togetherness over there is is stronger and bigger. I don't know if it's probably because of the fact that you know generation mm. generational stuff, you know. So yeah, yeah. Plus you're closer I, to Congo too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So this is like a, I want to say a natural effect of the colonization since the first generation went in there and then the other generation and so it's just like a, a common thing yeah and and here i feel like it's it's very different probably the way the system was set up in here uh-huh. is like uh, the community is kind of divided uh, and it's, it's funny it's not it's not only divided but it's la is so big there's not like 
we don't have like little Congo. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like there's no like little city, like there's little Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we technically have the jungles where everybody li- like lives once they come here, but there is no like, hey, I know if I go here, there's that Congolese store. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or there's that Congolese. Remember that's too, we talked about like a Congolese um, center. Like we, like we don't have that. Oh, and yes. I think that's what, and you know, as you get older, you know, they always say like, you can't run away from who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The older you get, the more and more you want to run to actually where you, who you are. So we're like, yo, where's our center? Yeah. Where's, where do the kids play? Where can yeah. I like help a younger Congolese person that's going to college avoid debt? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, hey, yeah. You, need a, you need help with your application. I'm going to help you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have that. And I think that kind of piqued our interest. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Patrick. No, no, no. It's, it's interesting. And you, you touched on something. And Julian, I just want to double back. Because um, from what I understand, it, in Belgium, because, uh, believe you talked about like a little Congo. Julian, in Belgium and Brussels, is it, was it Matongue or something like that? Is that what Matongue. it's called? Yeah, Matongue is like the main, the main African uh, headquarter of restaurant places. Yeah. It's like the, the Congolese community. Okay. Mm. Matongue doesn't mean that, but Matongue actually, so Matongue means it's a fruit. Uh, it's okay. a fruit. Okay, so and matonge, but it means fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like the, the, the real, the real uh, meaning of the the word uh, the word matonge, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't there a Cartier, uh, a neighborhood too, Cartier over in in in, in Kinshasa called Matonge? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. I was there when I when I was in Congo. Oh yes, yeah, uh, you yeah. went there too. It was, it was mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. So those, so Matonge, they made it like the place, like the, the main place for all community to, to gather there, to, 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 to create business there. And this is just like a place where you can go and hang out. You'll be finding, you know, African dresses, uh, get your, your, your hair um, done. Mm-hmm. Also, also like, like- um, all these places that sell CDs and music from back home. Mm. Mm-hmm. only there okay and your, your your mom and dad like they ran a restaurant there for like a long time right yeah it wasn't in matonge though but oh, you it know wasn't. it wasn't yeah in molenbeek which is a well-known um uh, you know neighborhood in in brussels okay mm-hmm. and just one oh sorry because i was Go gonna ahead. ask oh, over there like growing up i mean was there I and mean, you kind of talked about it so you had matonge you had your, your mom and your dad had that business mm-hmm. Were they doing a good job of like the different Congolese businesses working together, like collaborating, like even referring each other, like referring customers, like, oh, you're looking for a dress, well, head down to the lady down the street. Or you're looking for music, head, head down to that brother over there. Like were people yeah, doing they, that? Absolutely. The Congolese, you know, they do, especially, I, I want to say it's because over there, it's such a small country and, you know, the capital Brussels, it's a small city, right? Yeah. So everyone kind of known already the community in Brussels everyone know each other so I mm. think that's why there's a already kind of a, a huge uh, solidarity mm. honestly you know so it's kind of okay it's automatically you're going to be able to bring these people into your business or whatever you try to create and having your community supporting you okay. Okay. Which is which is not the same here because the community is not that. I mean, that's from my perspective. It's not that strong, you know. Mm-hmm. And you because the the work hasn't been done. They they that's need to point. be they they need to be like a different people. They go for it, you know. You have to mm-hmm. create from from any any type of position from that's you know from a business uh, perspective, from I don't know educational things perspective. There's many ways to, to, to do, you know, to pave the way. And I think that's why me and Tutu came up with CEO Ken, because of that. We feel we, there's a void. There's something like in the air, you know, mm-hmm. right? So one of the reasons why we came up with, like, CEO Ken was, like I said, we noticed that this Don team makes um, a Mikate, this Tonto, without more Mwamba. Oh, you know what I mean? Uh, look here, man. You the outlier in this, man. The rest of us got really? this. That's his brand. I did this, man. I don't know what's gonna happen when we like, you know, bring him over to our side, man. I don't know. Come <laughs> don't eat mamba and amikate. Hey. You, know, <laughs> you you stay on this set. You you can't you can't cross over. You stay with you stay with your gang. I'm that's here. why on that one, Tutule, I wouldn't be proud to call uh, Bileko my cousin. Just, <laughs> just, so don't be brag about it you know what i mean that's so funny but no we said but julian you bring up a good point somebody that's 
in Brussels or in Congo, they should not come to LA when they're, LA was one of the first cities after North Carolina, after Charlotte, right? Of Congolese Raleigh. Raleigh. Right? And Raleigh. The, right. What, what you said, oh, Raleigh, I'm sorry, Raleigh. Raleigh. So for mm -hmm. you to feel like, oh, there's no solidarity, that's, that's wrong because people have been here for what, 40, 50 years? Yeah. That's yeah. a long time. That's like, there's like, there's like a, so many Congolese people here that we don't even know. We'll go to a party and be like, who is this person? Well, and that's new, here. bro. That was new when we were growing up. I don't know if you remember this, Patrick, dude. We were the only Congolese family. Like, everywhere we'd go, if there was a uh, Congolese party, I knew everybody. I knew yeah. all the kids. I knew everybody. And there was like a handful of us. So yeah. we knew everybody. Now it's, right. it's changing. The, the, the population is getting bigger. But like right. in its inception, dude, there was like, I couldn't, I, I knew, I didn't know anybody who was Congolese who was my age when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like that, mm -hmm. that teenager or that person in fifth grade that you can go and say, oh, be like, oh, what's up, bro? And oh, what's going on? Where do you, you're right. We can just interact with. That didn't happen. It was me, my brother, and my cousins. And that was it. And, you know, being Congolese and being African wasn't cool in the 90s, bro. It was not cool. Wow. I remember being teased, you know, and it was other Black people who were teasing us, you know? Right. So it was hard being, my name is Tutul, going to school, being called Tutul, yeah. and people making fun of your name. What's your last name? So it was it was it was difficult, and but now like Isaiah has all these people he know who are like Congolese and like y'all American speaking English. I'm like, yo, how dope <laughs> is that? How dope is that? All right. So I guess well, we'll just continue with CEO Ken. So people need to realize CEO Ken means it's an acronym: Congolese Entrepreneurship Organization. And Ken explains it for Ken or whatever. But we're open with Brazzaville, so we're not like like. Like are haters, we? yeah. Uh, he said, are we? Oh, here we go. Here we go. No, we're open. No right. discrimination. No, no discrimination because because the the goal or so we have, the mission statement is this: the purpose of the conference organization is to create, direct, and connect current business owners to that to the in-house Congolese community they serve. They will also it will also lead to each business owner um, to also connect with one another in the Congolese community or whatnot. So one thing we try to do. Um, we had our first meeting and we'll get to that with the with the first meeting the purpose of this like i said i know i'm repeating myself is just like uh, if you own a business you need to go to your demographic and of course like it can be anybody it can be a, a, a ghanaian a nigerian a black american it doesn't it doesn't matter but the thing is, is like we realize that there's congolese business owners that have these businesses but congolese people that need the service don't even know it exists so why not allow us to bridge the gap Yep. Or, or or whatnot. So one of the first things we did was we kind of tried to come up with like you know, you know, some type of bit, um, agendas um, or whatnot. Um, some type of like um, those are, or we we had a meeting. I'm sorry. So in the first meeting here, let me go to these um, these notes. We had a meeting in February. Right, where Tutu did an incredible job like running it, which was we had it in Pasadena. Um, one of the objectives, like we said, was to connect people. Right, so we had, um, to see, I don't know if you want to go a little bit more, I kind of, I mean, I mean we, what do we have? We had, what do we do? When I was there, it's, like, it's almost like I don't remember. What did we do? Yeah, we went into, we went into, so we, we wanted to give like the basics. Like if you were going to start your business, here are some of the basic things you need to figure out or to think about as an entrepreneur. You need to think about the business, uh, business structure. What is that business structure going to be like? Uh, and we had a great conversation about that. Like, what what is the business structure going to be like? What's the purpose of, of of your business, and how to make sure that you have something in place that's mm -hmm. structured that you can put out, right? And then it also okay. allows you to put other structures in place. So that was the first piece of it. Second piece was just knowing the finances, no. like how do, what what is the cash flow like? Why is it important to know what your revenue streams are going to be? Um, what is a revenue stream? What is mm -hmm. a uh, and, and I think, um, and I think uh, the presenter did a great job of, mm -hmm. of, of talking about just kind of what the numbers are. What are the numbers for your business and how to make sure mm -hmm. that you understand what those numbers are. And then the last piece of it was just the marketing. And we wanted to end it with the marketing because the marketing is so important. You have uh -huh. a business, the business is doing what it's doing, but like, how are you going to reach the people, especially in a very specific market that we're talking about. If you're doing something for Congolese people, yeah. how do you reach those Congolese people on a consistent basis? Right. Being consistent about your marketing and being very 
um, savvy and intentional about your marketing. So those are three things. We had really, really impactful conversations. And mm-hmm. um, we're just excited to, to be able to take that conversation, kind of move the football forward. Yeah. And I think one thing, too, one, one thing we were we kind of emphasized was like this new era of like social media. Because you know how old how tantins and tontos are, even like the younger generation that are starting businesses, we don't, social media is, is so important. So I know even in the marketing section where like, you know, a lot of people in Congo, because the infrastructure isn't as modern as we are in the States or in Europe, I think more people use Facebook rather than use YouTube because YouTube takes too much memory. So one thing we were trying to uh, emphasize was, okay, you know, you need to have a social media presence. So whether it's Instagram, it's Facebook, you need, that's one way to get the word out. And don't be afraid of using Facebook as a business or whatnot, rather than it's just like, oh, you can converse with, or even WhatsApp. Really, WhatsApp is really huge as well, too. That's one way to get the word out with, you, with the business. So we had the first meeting, which was great. But the purpose of the first meeting was like to get the word out, but then also to be, we want Congolese businesses to be vendors at events we help, we're a part of. So prior to the, you know, this, this, this virus or whatnot, we were going to be at the, um, the Congo Fest. I was going to say um, Corona Fest. Congo <laughs> Fest. Oh, but the, be a part of the Congo Fest celebrating um, Congolese Independence Day. So, um, Yatu, too, why do you think it's important to connect Congolese businesses? I don't know if we're, we probably just went on a tangent, but why do you think it's important for Congolese businesses uh, to connect with Congolese people? Well, I think there's a, there's a couple of reasons. You know, when, 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 when people come to the States and come to L.A., uh-huh. you know, they're looking for a community. And, you know, America isn't the, isn't the most... Um, it, it isn't going to welcome you with, with, with open arms, right? There's you don't say that. People wow, out there crazy. Who are gonna, hey, you're coming, to, you're coming to, to, to L.A.? Oh, the welcoming party's coming, and they'll come pick you up at the airport, and then we're going, right? That, that doesn't happen. So you just kind of, if you know somebody, that's great. They'll pick you up from the airport, maybe drop you off. But then, like, what do you do? Once work starts and all of this craziness happens in our lives, how do you mm-hmm. stay connected to what you know? And, and yeah. if you don't have that, community yeah, yeah. go to you know you want some fufu or kwanga or just my desu yeah. or, or mfumbwa. you didn't cook it you look for somebody who's shout out to it. spoon 243 there we go Hawthorne, for those who there know we go. Yeah. <laughs> right so it's not there so i think it's really important on that aspect but then also the the, the flip side of that if you're a business mm. and you're looking to get to get market share and you're looking to kind of just spark something it's yeah. so hard to get kind of that traction. And if you're just trying to go out and get businesses here and there, it's hard. But if you can go someplace and know that there's a community of people who are looking for what you have to offer, it's right. easier to get your stuff off the ground. If right. you're starting insurance, you don't know how to start your book of business. My brother did, um, he did auto insurance with Allstate. And if you're starting off fresh, like, where do I start? Well, every Congolese person has a car in LA, so they need insurance. So right. let's go straight to that community, right? Or if you're going to open up like a Big Lots, like there should be someone who has a Big Lots. Big Lots is a great business. If you have a Big Lots, where do I have it? Who should be, who's going to be coming to my, to, to my Big Lots? I need to send the, the message, the word out to every Congolese person I know right. to come to my Big mm-hmm. Lots. Because even though people, you know, Congolese people, we have this, um, this, this, this idea that, Congolese people don't like spending money. Oh, they're cheap. They want to think for free, but people are shopping someplace. They're buying these expensive, you know, Gucci shoes and Gucci belts and Gucci bags. Like, and they then you need go to, stuff. And Come you go to, to my to, big lots. Right, and you go to a party and they are wearing a suit with the tag out, then they return it at Marshall's the next day after the party. They're shopping. <laughs> they're <laughs> shopping. They're shopping. So how do we take advantage of that and not take that Congolese mentality and say, oh, Congolese, they don't, they don't like spending money. Oh, you can't depend on Congolese people. They're they're spending their money someplace. Somebody is buying hair at some Korean person's hair shop. Why yeah. not it, you buy hair from a Congolese person's hair shop? You know what I'm saying? And, so, and I exactly. Think that's, that's the two points. That's, I, that's the double side. 
And I think another thing to add to, one thing we want to try to establish with CEO Ken, and I think we're doing it with uh, Bantu Boys, is trust. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Legitimacy. I think, and Patrick and Julie, you can, I think you guys can test to this, like, we've kind of, we've been a man of our word with Bantu Boys, whether it be like, hey, we'll come to your show, we'll come to the Congolese meeting. Like, we've been at every, since we started Bantu Boys, I think we've been, it's, I think we've been at, besides one meeting, we've been at every Congolese meeting. So what happens is you start to show face and people are like, yo, you're here every month. Okay, they're down. They're with it. They're not talking about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing with CEO can establish trust. So if let's say you're a Congolese business, right? And you're like, yo, I want to be a part of it, right? You know, you're going to have to go through some type of like, not, not passage, but it's like, we got to make sure all your stuff is together. A vetting process. Yeah, a vetting process. Uh, what what vetting. do you say? Vetting. vetting process. Yeah, vanity process. Because no, vetting. 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 vetting? Oh, okay. I, okay, vetting. I'm sorry, right? Sorry. <laughs> two minutes, by the way. You know what? Oh, two minutes. Okay, I said okay. I said van vanity because I saw a picture of Anita and Rebo earlier. <laughs> <laughs> about that. We'll talk about that. That's, that's something later. Something later. Right. But no. Flash yeah. the picture for all of yeah, us. To, the, to enjoy. The, the, I can't. I got some jump offs that are going to watch this. But look. Oh, no. <laughs> As uh, I saw me, actually, I'm something else. But, you know, you go through this vetting process where we make sure that your business is legit. But guess what? If your business isn't legit, we're going to help you make it legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we're not yeah. trying to push people away and be like, because people already have enough of that outside. Yeah. You know, you wanna, if you're part of the community, the purpose is to try to help you make your business legit. Like CEO Ken is gonna help Bantu Boys become LLC, become a, a business, become a corporation because we're moving up. So we are gonna need these paperwork and this legal stuff in order as we move up this entertainment ladder or whatnot. So, viens tout, y'a tout, viens la bisso. Uh, so my question be like, um, so do you plan on partnering with other Congolese businesses? Yeah, we would like, especially at the beginning when we get this started, trying to figure out what businesses are out there. Um, you know, Junior's really good at this, at figuring out who's out there, who's doing different things. Oh yeah, creep example, status. We have a, we have a, my, my cousin, um, DR, DR, DRC Apparel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric, Eric, yeah. North Carolina, Eric. Yeah, he's in North Carolina, and he's been doing stuff forever. I remember he came to my sister's wedding, and he was talking about his thing. He went to Congo to do. Um, he did a photo shoot, I think, in Congo, and he was a part of some type of fashion week that was going on there. So he's he's like legit. So being able to partner up with him would be dope. Or I know a, a friend of mine has a friend. She's Congolese. I think she's from. I think they're from the the eastern part of Congo. Her name is Kaindo. But she has a okay. clothing company. Clothing oh, NYC. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's doing good things, big things. Yeah, yeah. she's, um, then I met her a while ago, but she's dope. She's dope too. So, like, there are a lot of good people who are doing a lot of good things that we can partner up with mm -hmm. um, and hopefully find some type of synergy because we have that synergy. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. We can, you know, come together because, you know, we're, we're community people, you know, yeah. black people in general are community people yes. and Congolese people, especially we're community people. So we can do things in community and concert. I think it really speaks to our roots Absolutely. and allows us to kind of magnify and amplify what, what the other people are doing, especially us, you know, we're just kind of getting started with this, mm -hmm. but, you know, finding those areas where we can kind of find our niche mm -hmm. and then bring other people on, 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 on board. I think one, another one is with, um, with Luko, Lukogo. How do you, you say her name, Patrick? Luko. Oh, I'm trying to, there's a way you say it. Luko. Because so, I think the G is silent. Lukoho. Yeah, for sure. The G is definitely silent because the G ain't in her. But, oh, um, okay. <laughs> Damn, DJ Quick. The disrespect. I know, right? I know. <laughs> hey, that was a good one. Yeah. Hey, that, that came from the cut, boy. Yeah. What? Respect. Yeah, respect. respect. We, we, <laughs> were you waiting for that one to pull up? Were you waiting for the back pocket because, like, when it comes out? My sarcasm and hate is just natural. It's, <laughs> it's just something naturally hate. But no, um, with her, she does, she does a great uh, job with the organization, um, Congo Diaspora Summit, that they just did um, last year. That's one group we definitely want to partner with and try to figure out because the turnout that she had in, in, in New York 
was almost unprecedented. I know. I remember before it happened, she told us, "I'm hoping 70 people come." Remember, we did the live um, last week, Patrick, last Friday, mm-hmm. Julian, and she was like, "Yeah, we expected 70, 75, and ended up being 200 people, and it was all these different Congolese people from around the world, mm-hmm. Congolese people from the Netherlands, Norway, that just showed up. Like, no, I'm coming. So we think there's working with her. With it's, I think there's a it's it's endless opportunity for us to meet other Congolese businesses that are doing in different fields. And also too, I just want to clarify when we say partnering with Congolese businesses, it's from, it's not only just food. I know I keep harping on food and entertainment because, you know, we're, we know we're entertainment, but podcasts, businesses, politics, comedy, art, sports, um, any type, any type of businesses, because I don't, I, I don't think we realize that we all work hand in hand. Like Congo's, yep. uh, like Julie's in, is in, is in business, but, and we're in entertainment, but <laughs> Congolese, so we know there's a way we can, there's always a way we all can work together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's always a way. So yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, go ahead, Julie. But this is how exactly, no, just to take, to join you on what you're saying, this is exactly the, the work that as a, you know, in the community, the type of work that need to be done, such as, you know, building, you know, a stronger community through, mm. through supporting each other, through, you know, businesses and all these things. And also not only that, you know, you know, it's like, uh, it's building the community, but also the businesses, mm. you know, the economy, because mm. when you, when you go, for example, when you go to, what are the city? I, you know, I used to Uber drive a lot before, and there's, there's, there's some outside of LA, you go and you see just the Chinese community building each other. It's, it's insane. It's insane. They have their own bank. They have their own restaurant. They have their own. And, th- and this is power right there. This is no, power. Absolutely. absolutely. And I think also to the add on, um, yeah, Julie, like the fact that we have Congolese people all around the world, mm-hmm. all around the world that are doing stuff. So the fact that I know my, one of our goals as CEO, Ken, is to be like, hey, man, I would hope for us to have a building, a community center in Los Angeles. Like, so picture if we, like, we have that community center here, we're able to do the podcast there. Absolutely. We can teach the kids, we can teach the kids Lingala, Chiluba, Congo, French, Swahili, like, no, you guys come here to come learn, Mm -hmm. you know, if kids need help with their SATs, you come to this building. Kids need help to fill out a college application, you come here. And it's, I think that's important because I know in my work, when I, um, when, I was work, when I was in grad school at Drew, I would see these kids that would, they would have the whole high school planned out. I remember seeing a 15 year old kid say, hey, I know I'm gonna become an anesthesiologist. I was like, at 15, I didn't know what an anesthesiologist was. What the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you want your, our kids to have the, that type of aspiration where, you know, you can become a surgeon, you yeah. can own a business, mm-hmm. you can, you know what I'm saying? You can go into entertainment. You have a place in a center of people that will help guide you through it. So you can miss the steps. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I know that's like one of like our personal goals, like, like especially here in LA, like, yeah. Hey, we have a center. Cause like, for example, with Eric, in um, North Carolina, he was like, no, I have my own center. Like he has his own like space. I'm like, you have your own creative space. Oh my goodness. If you were in LA, we get so much work done. We go to you. And I love the places we have relationships with. Don't get it wrong. They're great. But I was like, man, can you picture if Eric was in LA? Mm. Oh, I'd exactly. gladly give you the 150. Yeah, no, that's all definitely. Good. Yeah. So, you know, I think, uh, let me see here. What's the, I don't know, Patrick, you have any anything to chime in or anything you want to, yeah, yeah, definitely. Just to, you know, because the, the power of having like your own space or spaces are important, you know, because, you know, part of, you know, my band two boys stuff, you know, I'll be looking and doing research, seeing about some of these other communities uh, mm-hmm. across the nation. So like you mentioned North Carolina, um, apparently in Seattle, like I saw there's an organization. Here. It seems like they have a center. Seattle? Said, yeah, there's a Congolese community there. It's, um, it's called Congolese Integration Network or something like that. And it's like legit. Like they actually have like government grants um they have like french classes lingala classes stuff like that like some of these other communities and some of these other places are doing like big things and like collaborating with each other and building so it's there it can be done 
But hey, one of the beautiful things about this internet is uh, <coughs> we can meet, I can like just be on Google and find out, oh wow, this organization exists and they're doing this. Yeah. Hey, you said Seattle. I had, yeah. I thought the furthest north in like the West Coast was this, cause you know, there's like a, there's like some really great Polish people in the Bay, like yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. Patterson and San Francisco that are doing like wonderful. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, we're in the Bay. But you said Seattle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Hey, I'll blow your mind again. Another place you wouldn't even expect it in well, Michigan. Um, there's a community in Detroit, but there's a huge community in Grand Rapids, Michigan, like thousands of people. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because that's where a lot of the uh, a lot of refugees end up there. So there's huge oh, Congolese oh. communities there. The one article I read said there was like maybe 10, 11 Congolese churches out there. Like that's how many people there are out there. Yeah, that's the first business. Yeah, that's the first business in Congo church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, no it's, it's real, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. No, but no you know, but you know what's real, you know what's real interesting when, I don't know if you remember, Yacht too, when we first started talking about CEO Ken, and I was saying, hey, I want a school because I have this old, old Congolese grammar book that helped me, like, like learn, like, Lingala, because I can write and read in Lingala. And I was like, yo, we can get to the church. Because that's where, I, there's only two places Congolese people migrate, the Matanga and the church. Man. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's mostly the Matanga, it's not even the church, because the Matanga, you get free food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah. right? Unfortunately, right? So we're like, one thing I think we're trying to like fight to is like old bad habits, where mm-hmm. we only see each other at Matangas and the church. Like even, you know, Patrick, we'll go to the meetings, right? And we're trying to get the younger, like the president, um, President Bumbastic is like, you guys can help us be the bridge to like the younger ones, to feel like, hey, it's mm-hmm. cool, your voice is important, the younger ones. So like, you know, we've tried, we've gotten a couple of people, young people, hey, come, you need to come to the meeting. Your voice is important, you need to come. And they, and it sounds crazy, especially the younger ones. The younger Congolese are like, wow, I appreciate it because the younger ones, they are trying to get in touch with back home. Like they'd be going to Folly concerts. Remember the, the Gims concert, remember you guys? Yeah, we remember, kept- There's all these young Congolese people that were at the Gims concert. And we're like, well, we didn't give you guys tickets. They were like, no, we're coming. They're like all young. So there's, there's this like thirst to be like, hey, I want to be involved. People want to feel like, how can we be involved? And I think what we do and what CEO Ken does is a good way to show people like, hey, this is one way for you to get involved. Mm-hmm. Or to see what's happening because you don't want to be left out. You know what I mean? And let me ask you this. What do you think about, like, let's say somebody that's not not an entrepreneur. What is the benefit of CEO Ken or what can be the benefit of CEO Ken? I think I think knowing that there's people in your community who are doing, you know, doing things Uh is really important. But I think just being able to see what the possibilities are. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I'm in this community. I grew up in this neighborhood. And my mom speaks Lingala, uh, my dad speaks Lingala, my cousins, whatever, but whatever. I I go off and hang out with like my American friends or whatever. But just to know, yo, there are other Congolese people who are like doing it. Like not just like playing, play money. They're like doing it. Right. And here's the fruits of their labor and they could do this. So can you like there, there should be no reason why we should be half stepping. If so-and-so can come here, and in two, three, four years can have this enterprise. Why can't you who've been here all of your life, right? So it, it really allows you to see what the possibilities are. Um, that's like the big existential thing, right? There's what, what, what the possibilities for me are out there. Mm-hmm. And then like on a real granular level, like, yo, I wanna buy some Liputa. Yeah. I wanna buy uh, Yamado. I wanna, I want to get a dope Congolese hat. I want to get a, um, I'm, I'm trying to find some, some Congolese uh, little things to hang on my rearview mirror. It's like, where do I find that stuff? Right. Yeah. This is a place where you can, you can do that. Just, just to, just to, to show some pride mm. in your community, you know, the Congolese wallet, Congolese belt, whatever the case is, but just mm-hmm. want pride in your community. Like I got a, I should have, I should have rocked it. I have a, Next time we do something, I have, I have a Congolese do rag, but like just, just stuff like that. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, to be able to um, to just show your the pride you have um, oh. on, in, in in your community. What do you think? Ghost uh, okay, so case. We had the first meeting to get the word out, which was great. The video will come out soon. We're like editing the the video in the meeting so people can see what we're doing. Um, but what do you think is what is our, can you explain to people like our, our end goal? Like, because it's like, okay, well, 
if I'm in Toronto and I'm Congolese, I'm not going to be going to LA to your meeting. What, but I have a great business and I want other Congolese people to know about my business. What is the benefit of being on CEO Ken? Yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping that we can build a following, you know, kind of like what you guys have with the Bantu boys, mm-hmm. build a following where people know that they can come to CEO Ken mm-hmm. to, ha- to, to have a sense of what Congolese businesses there are and where I can patronage. So if I'm in Toronto and I'll go to that dope uh, Congolese restaurant, I can go, come to CEO Ken and I can check that out. Or if, if, yeah, provides, if, not to cut you off, but where is CEO Ken? Where will that be? Can you explain that? Uh, you're talking about the website. Uh, the website? Ha. Okay, yeah. we're going there. Yeah. yeah, so we're hoping to do an online platform. We're hoping to have yeah. an online platform, almost like a marketplace where people can come in, where we can have a mix of people who mm-hmm. are looking for Congolese related um, you know, things, and we can have vendors and businesses who come onto our site. So it's like a mixing of the two. So you can come to our website and this is a place where we have a curated list of different businesses that you can patronage, whether it's in person, brick and mortar, or mm-hmm. you know, online. You can order stuff online. So that's that's the that's the that's the end goal that I'm really excited about. Like right. building and, that up. And um I guess to just to make this simplified, it would be like the Congolese Craigslist. So, like, if I was in, I'm in L.A., and I know next week we're going to go to North Carolina, and I'm like, man, I want to get some Kwanga out there. If there's a Congolese business in North Carolina that's on CEO Ken, you know, they'll, they they pass all the tests, blah, 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 the business is legit, they're on our side. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to DRC Apparel because they have, I mean, whoever, Kwanga, my mom, whoever, has, um, has Kwanga, I already know to go to her store to get Kwanga. Or if I need clothes... DRC Apparel is on this website. So when I go to North Carolina, okay, I'm going to hit him up. Because yeah. I think, especially in this fast-paced world, we have we can't be, like what worked for our parents is great where everything was word of mouth. You know, you don't know him, you don't know him, but we're doing so much. Yeah, We have so much going on where it's like, nah, man, I need to find it on the phone. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm the phone generation. So Absolutely. if I go to New York, I know I can go here and go talk to this person. Or I, I can go to this person here when I go to Brussels and et cetera and et cetera or whatnot. So that's like um, like the end goal where... Yeah, and then build it, bridge, bridging the gap between these different communities, right? Like there yeah. should be no reason why these different communities aren't connected together because I think we're, we're really fragmented. We're fragmented in LA as it is. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah just in general for different communities and right. you know maybe there, are, there may be other people out there who are able to connect to different communities but like i think as a whole yeah. we're, we're very much fragmented so you know what is that connection maybe this could be part of a small yeah. piece of that connection and other people can do their things but we can all connect in some kind of way starting no out. i i, I think it is because i know one thing for example let's say like the bunch of boys we talked about in next year in march we want to do like a comedy special right if that's on CEO Ken and Kong <laughs> come here, they're like, yo, they're having a comedy special. Let's say they come, the ticket is $10, $15, whatever. Excuse me. They come to a great comedy show, but they come in support. That goes a long way yeah. with building community identity and community confidence. Like I have to tell you, when we did our first show, which you didn't come to, I'm a little disappointed in you two. but I don't blame you. I blame James and Luther, but that's neither here or there. But um, uh, what you call it? Uh, when President uh, Bostic and his wife Tanya came, that meant a lot to me. I was like, "Wow, the president of the community like came to our show." That that means a lot. Like that's like he's not talking it; he's walking it. You know listen, I mean? listen. I feel bad now. Your next show, your next show. I'm gonna put on my calendar. I'm gonna tell Carly she has baby duties, and. Hey man, don't do that to lies. Hey, don't do that to my cousin in law, man. Don't tell her baby duties. Hey, come on, man. We gotta support. <laughs> Look, that's her support of you that she's gonna watch our two crumb snatchers yeah. while you would I, I go out and, yeah. and show show love to you guys. Hey, look, yeah, yeah, totally. He has his question. Yeah. Um so since you know the cor- the coronavirus uh you know hasn't reached this is only the beginning now, right? Yeah. So, do you see any takeaways for, you know, entrepreneur and uh, young entrepreneur during this time? Yo, this isn't a time for you to run away. This is a time for you to like jump in because there's a lot happening. 
uh, the stimulus package that passed, find a way to get in because they have money for small businesses. They have money for you to, mm. you know, if like us, I just all morning today, I had to postpone some of our loan, loan payments. Uh, but this is an opportunity to mm. capitalize on all this money that's being thrown out there. And this opportunity to kind of gear up and get ready because once this coronavirus breaks, uh, blows over, we're going to be out again. We're going to be dying to go places. I'm going to co- yeah. concerts. Yeah, I got all this money saved up. I'm, let me. So people are going to be spending money again. So yeah. I think we have to we have to set ourselves up and be ready to take advantage of the situation. I mean, now yes. get ready, like Junior Junior was saying. He was kind of joking about it, but like mm-hmm. being still, being quiet, but getting ready because once this this dies dies down, I don't mm-hmm. know how long it's going to be. Like be ready to get out there running. Yeah. yeah. This, 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 I think, yeah, Julian Patrick, this is the perfect time. Like, I know I was joking earlier and I said, oh, man, it's hard to do nothing. No, it's just hard to be inside this much. But I yeah. know for myself, it's just like editing, editing, mm-hmm. editing, writing, mm-hmm. editing. This is the, we've never in this post social media era have been able to sit still. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good Since point. MySpace, this is the first time we've been able to, I can like just sit down and like it's just. A good kind side of, of it. Yeah, there's some bright side about that. No, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge bright side. Like, when was the last time the world actually stopped? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is the perfect time. Like all the editing, I know Patrick and Julian, we talk kind of like off camera. Like, you know, if there's like a set date for when this virus is over, like you know, make sure we have the website done. Have all this, like all this. Me and the other two with CEO can have the website done, have it in place because people are. People, it's funny, this is going to give so many people so much perspective because guess what? We realize what's important. Health, family, right? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Food, yep. water, and I guess toilet paper is important, I guess, whatever. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like after this is done, people are going to appreciate the little things, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to come and support. Like I was listening to this podcast, not to go on a tangent, but this guy was like, I'm in LA, but my father's in Boston and he's getting older. I can't take care of him because of this virus, we can't travel. Mm-hmm. So picture when this virus is over, he's just, picture his relationship with his father. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's the small thing mm-hmm. that he took advantage of before. It's like, oh, I can see my dad whenever. Now you can't? You know what I mean? So, crazy, man. you know what I'm saying? So after this, there's gonna be a lot of stuff. People are gonna pay more attention to each other. They're gonna wanna do more things together. Be present. This is where like, we have a huge, a huge benefit as like entrepreneurs where it's like, like yo, Take advantage of this. Get your ducks in order. The government just passed a two trillion dollar stimulus package. Mm-hmm. There's something in there for you and I to take advantage of. So, so do yeah. out there, get your research, talk to people, figure out what what that advantage is, and, and let's do it. Let me tell you something, Yatsu. I know what is the advantage. Them new Jordans are about to come out. Oh, that, that oh. <laughs> Ooh, buddies. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting some myself. If I get the stimulus money, come on, oh, son. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what you say? What you say? <laughs> because obviously it's going to, uh, you know, yeah. to fund, you know, the, the, how many? How many trillion? Two, Two trillion. trillion. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, but, and and we, I, we have to go ahead, yeah, Julie, I'm sorry. I feel like this is also a huge opportunity for the president. I don't want to get political, but he's going to be reelected. Oh, so, Jesus oh, Christ. We won't, get, we won't get political, but of he, course, he, of course he he's will. finding a way to screw it all up. Because <laughs> <laughs> he is finding a way to screw it all up. He can't even get freaking. Oh. It's, a, it's a W. Get the ventilators to New York. I don't care how much it's going to cost. Get the ventilators made, send them yeah. to New York, and say you saved the day. The, the governor's dying for it, and yeah. here he is being petty. He's, yeah. he's, he's screwing up his own joint. Yo, it, you guys see yesterday, the, the United States, we became the epicenter. Oh, yeah. We got yeah. more than Italy. We got more than China. It's like, yeah. oh, That's man, it. This is... He don't even know how to save the day. He, he can't. He, he, has, he doesn't have the capacity to save the day if it's not about himself. But you know what? I, I, and I'm not defending him, but I'm like, because you have those idiots and like that people don't believe that this is actually real. Because, mm-hmm. you know, nothing has really... That's the thing. We are fortunate because we're surrounded by two borders of water and our allies are south and north of us. So nothing happens here. Yeah. You know, we grew up where... Remember when there was like a bunch of Congolese people at a party? I'll never forget this. And I was like... Who are these people? They're like, oh no, there was war in Ken, the second war, so we had to leave. People don't go through shit here. 
Not, 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 not really. So there was people, remember you saw those kids in Florida spring break? I'm going to have my spring break. I don't care about the virus. And they got sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh... like look, we're in, a, in America where money is, the dollar is king. Businesses are shutting down because they're like, yo, this virus is real. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like people are getting sick. Like you have to take this like serious, man. Like, you know what I mean? It's a pandemic. Like this is, this is, this is real. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have any, uh, have any more depth to, is there any, anything else we want to like add on or? Tule, what's it? What's the, the, the so your, your long term vision? Man, my long term vision. So this this um this this marketplace is is a big deal. And if we can get that kind of going and get that kind of vibrant, that's yeah. the long term goal. But like, you know, we talk about having a community center, you know? Yeah. Um, and how can that happen? You know, money is just an object you know if, if we can find a way to like you know get a community building so like all of this stuff like junior was saying goes through this community center you know i think that would be a big difference and like keep it away from all of the you know po- political mess that happens in our community but, but yeah. keep it a place that's that's pure and totally about the people uh. you know, like, so, so that's that's my big goal, man. Like, if we can get this marketplace jumping off and yeah. doing what it's supposed to do and bring together Congolese people, not just Congolese people, but everyone from the diaspora into this marketplace and bring businesses together so we know we're, we're supporting our own, mm-hmm. you know, I think that'll be a big deal. And we can spread this out from here to Matonge, you know? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and, and you know what? That's a, absolutely. And to add on, um, you have to the, that's the thing, too, like, it starts with CEO Ken because we're fortunate. We know where we're from, we're Congolese, but everybody in the diaspora, we're all connected. You know what I mean? Because I know like for like the caribou, my American friends want to come. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, no, we're coming to the caribou. I was like, wow, this is okay, cool. This is great. You know what I mean? You want to be in touch with like your roots. But then also, Yatatu, do you think we want to try to set up something here to also go back home? Like where it's like, hey, you have something where we're doing business back home if possible. Yeah. So one of the things that, that came out of the conversation that I was really surprised about was what structure do we have in place to do business back home? You know, like yeah. everyone, ev- all of our parents, every single last one of our parents want to go back and do business in, in Congo. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, most of us would like to go back and do business in Congo, but what does that look like? What, what, what do we need to make happen? There's taxes that you need to pay. You got to think about, you know, the, the conditions on the ground there, employees the on the ground here, like all that, you right? So how do we set up a system to where we know people, right? Because people do stuff in Congo, but it's like in the secret, like the dead of night, they're, they're, they're packing, you know, uh, containers and they send the container back. Come, you're like, yo, you had a container go? Yeah, you know, so you know, yeah. how do we set up a system where all of us are learning from one another and even though business is a is a is a is a competitive place, but yeah. like, how do we set up these systems to where we can very uh, matter of factly invest in businesses in the Congo and get a return from it, and know exactly what that entails, what that looks like? So doing business in in Congo, when we went back in I think it was 2011, it's just amazing the opportunities that are there. It is amazing, but like, okay, what does that look like? How much do I need to invest? How do I trust someone there? Like all these things that need to happen. So um, I think I think there is an opportunity there. Mm. And I think if, if we can kind of Huge. stay Huge. the course mm. and try to figure out what that would look like, I think it, it, it could be helpful for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. gosh. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, uh, uh, that's something that our, uh, our friends over at the Congolese Diaspora Impact Summit yeah. have been working on. So it, it, yeah. it, all, it all comes together. Uh, and you know, uh, <clears throat> and Luco is is adamant about like us like being a part of it because you know her sister Mo Muisa was there so she's like no she's like there's gonna be a way where we all can like work Absolutely. together you know Yasutu what do you think about with CEO Ken is not only that we're working on business I also think we're also trying to fight old stigmas yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, you can't do business with a Congolese person. You, you can't, 
trust a Congolese person when it comes to business. They'll steal your money. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, I think there has to be a paradigm, sh paradigm shift. And if you think about all of our parents that came here, mm. they were all, you know, professionals or they were maybe blue collar, mm. right? They came here, they became nurses, some yeah. became doctors, some maybe worked in, you know, different industries, but like they don't, we don't come here as businesses like, yo, I'm having a business in Congo and I'm coming to the States because I'm trying to expand my business. Right. right? Like, I, I don't know. I, I think we have this entrepreneurial mindset, but it's not at the level that it needs to be to enterprise. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, people might push back a little bit, but if you look at all of our elders, our, my, my parents, I can't think of any tonton. Well, we had one uncle who used to do business he used to come stay with us, Tonton Pelu. I don't know if you remember Tonton Pelu. He'd come over and yeah. Dusan stayed with us. And they were like big business people. But like those, pe those kind of individuals are few and far be between. Like everyone who's coming here to the States, they're fleeing, right? Mm. They're fleeing a crisis. They're fleeing war or they're, they're, yeah. they're coming here for a better opportunity, which is great. Now you're here. What does that opportunity look like? And then how do we now instill this entrepreneurial mindset so you're not just going to work and nothing wrong with having your nine to five and doing what you got to do, put food on the table. But like, there's so many opportunities out there. And how do we plug our Congolese people into that opportunity? So you know that you too can, you know, have a business because Congolese people have business ideas, but like, how does it get like, you know, how do we develop that? So I think there's tremendous opportunities to help develop those businesses. And that was one of the things that we talked about CEO Ken is how do we help develop these entrepreneurial mindsets and develop these businesses. So not only are you going to do business here, right? Like I was talking to my Armenian friends. I don't really like to compare um, different, uh, um, different communities because, you know, everything's different. But my Armenian friend is like, yeah, like I know like five of my uncles who own big lots. And I know this person who owns that. I know. And if we have to go to a grocery store, we go to his spot and we go to, right. But we don't have that same type of network around us. So we need to build that network. And, you can open, open up a Vallarta out in the IE, right? There's no Vallarta out in the IE. Open up a Vallarta out there. Uh, there's, there's no big lots over in your, open up a big lots. We're looking for a, um, me and my wife are starting franchising. Let's get Congolese people into franchising. We mm -hmm. have a business to, you know, sell the puta. M Mom keeps talking about all this uh, commerce that can happen from Congo. Okay, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's get out there. Let's do it. And as we're doing it, let's all support one another around that. And make sure that we know that we're breaking the stigma. Oh, you said Congolese people don't pay? Well, my whole payroll last year was from the Congolese community. What are you talking right. about? Right? So those are the kind of things that we need to, um, to do. But it's going to take work. And it's going to take, you know, one person after the other. Maybe it's us. Maybe it's someone who's listening to this who's saying, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then all of us can be um, testimonies to what it looks like. Right. To be Congolese, start your Congolese businesses, be supported by Congolese businesses, and everything goes where you planned it. Okay. That's interesting because you talk about being a testimony. This is on a, a small, minuscule like level, but or my, uh, micro level. But I, even our, our 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 comedy shows, Patrick and Julian, like we've had two shows. It's amazing. Back to back sold out, and it's all amazing. been through the black and Congolese dollar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like even that on a, I remember the first show we had, my improv group members, they're, you know, they're not from LA, you know, cause you know, people in Hollywood, they all come from all over. And after the show, they're like, B, you have a whole packed show with nothing but black people. We've never, and everybody's welcome, but you know what I'm saying? Because where we are, it's in a black neighborhood. Yeah, and, right. And they were just like in shock. And I was just like, yeah, you know, there's power. We still have, we have power. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're still important. The, the dollar still, we still, you know, if you cater to it or you show, hey, you could do it and you, you know, you respect people's dollar and that's coming with the stigma, right? You know what I'm saying? If people feel like they can trust you and you're honest and you're genuine, they will come and support. That's one thing with like black and Congolese people. You know what I'm saying? Don't lie to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do not like do, and, and really that's anybody, right? You go to any other community, right? If they feel like you're being like fake or phony, they won't come and support you. I know I wouldn't if you if you don't seem genuine. Of not. You know, but you know what? But you know what? White, people, white people white people know this. Uh, record execs they invest in hip hop music because they know black people are going to patron 
these these art these uh these 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 um, artists and they're going to get money from that and fox and cbs and, and all these networks when they fall on hard times what do they do they get black shows because they right. know the black community is going to come out and they're going right. to skyrocket their network and then they can go back to you know producing their whack-ass white right right, right. okay we're good uh, yeah oh yeah hold on oh never mind yeah we're good we're good we're, we're good, good. The, the, these whack ass white um, shows, but they know that. And so now it's our turn to understand the leverage of this. You think yeah. a white person knew that they can open up an African restaurant in the hood, that they're not going to go in the hood and open a white restaurant, a uh, black uh, African restaurant? They're going to do it. Heck yeah. So let's beat them to the punch. Right. And let it be us. Absolutely. And let's, let's make it work. Yeah. Hey, Julian, I, I'm wondering, because obviously we're talking about here in the American context, but like in, in Belgium and Europe when you were growing up, or just from what you saw, like, did was there ever a situation like what, what Yaku was talking about where there maybe is a, a Congolese businessman, like a dude who has businesses in Congo, but he was able to now franchise and move or open up offices in, in Belgium, Brussels at all? Great question. You mean from Congo in Belgium? Yeah, so, yeah. To Belgium? Yeah. yeah. That was able to open his business. Yeah, absolutely. You got is any this, examples? Is, uh, yeah, actually, I know this guy. Uh, his name is... Uh, uh, by the way, I wanted to add uh, something on uh, Tutule. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, actually, Congo, it's actually it's very good because everything has to be done. So in every area, you know, you come up and it's like everything has to be built. So you have so much opportunity, so much. It's just you and your mindset and uh, the way you're going to be able to, you know, to build whatever business you try to do. But everything, it's, it's, it's open. It's an open market. So this is one. And then Patrick, um, uh, I know it wasn't a question, but I just thought about it. No, no, no. Back no. Congo. Uh, Patrick, uh, so yes, uh, the example I have here, it's uh, Frank, uh, Salon, Salon Franck. So haircut. Uh -huh. He got two, two um, hair salon in Belgium. Mm. And now we got we got one uh, in Congo. Oh, the yeah, other absolutely. way around. Absolutely. Hey. You know, uh, Julian. Even that alone. Remember, the two we talked about it. If there's a wedding, who's cutting our hair? Just even that. Like, think about that. If you were 18 years old, a Congolese dude that was like, you know, I don't really want to go to college. I don't want to go to trade tech for seven years, or whatever. <laughs> oh, come on, just, man. Right, and he just became a barber. That's cash money. Yeah. Can you imagine? Look, yeah. I, I, I'll go to a wedding. Mm -hmm. You know, the day before the wedding, I'm going to park at whoever's house. And everyone in the wedding who wants to, needs a haircut, come through. Yeah. Right? The, the wedding party, everyone come through. And everyone Easy. goes and get a haircut there with, from yeah. the dude. What? Easy. And think about it. You know, when, and that's another thing with CEO Ken. People think it's like, we're trying to make you have this Fortune 500 company. I mean, sure, if you can get there, that's great. But just even that alone, mm -hmm. just a barber, you know what I'm saying? Or, oh, like, um, Danting Tanya, she's an accountant. Oh, we have an accountant? Okay, I'm going to go, oh, 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 Mandela, he's an accountant. Okay, I'm going to go to you for taxes. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's something so small. People think, like, you know, to make a change has to be this, like, big macro big thing. No. It can, it can, it can literally be... Who sells the Kwanga? Oh, you sell a Kwanga? You're on the CEO Ken website? Okay, I'm going to order it from you. Boom, I need 10 because we're about to have a big my, my, my daughter's birthday party. Or yeah. somebody's oh. graduating from college. You know what I'm saying? Like Let's it's go. That's, that's just, and that's small. It doesn't, people think it has to be this like, oh, I need to, like, we, we're going to be the NFL. No, that the NFL is 100 years old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm saying like, no, you could be like the, like the guy that you said, Julian, that has a, own a barber shop. That's great. That's because real, okay, in American capitalism, America thrives off of the mom and pop brick and mortars. They don't thrive off of NFL. Those are outliers. Yeah. It's the small, like, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, who's suffering right now? Am, you know what's funny? Okay, I love shoes clearly. You know Nike made a gang of money since the coronavirus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. A gang of money because people are at home. They're like, I'll go on Nike and buy shoes. You know who's Absolutely. suffering? The, the, the fucking um, a small Italian store that only has one that doesn't have a franchise, that's what makes America grow. Because yeah. Amazon's going to make, the Nike's going to win. Yeah. 
They already got theirs. They got their billions. So with CEO Ken, it's it's that person that's like, hey, I have a small store or I want to, you know, have a store, just have, be entrepreneur. Like, that's the person we're talking to. I mean, shoot, if you can be, you know, Nike or Ken, go ahead. Hey. Yeah. I mean, because that's, that's the person that makes the, that we're, that we're trying to like reach and touch or whatnot. Absolutely. And, um, I guess, uh, Patrick, Julie, you guys have any more questions? I, I mean, I mean, I don't got. It. I mean, I'm hey, I'm just happy with Julian get that example. I'm like, okay, that's dope. That's that's good to hear. Like, no, that's yeah. That. I have other example. There's that lady called uh, Mer. So there's that lady. Mm-hmm. Sorry, her name just went off. No, no, go ahead. But she does have like three restaurants right now, and her her places to eat is just the reference. It's called Poco Bazaar. No, Malu. Her name is Malu. Sorry. There we go. So you go to Malu. Malu, she went known for her taba, for the mapapu, uh, chicken wings, for the specialty from Congo, right? Congolese specialty. But now, so successful, she had to open another one and a third one. All of them in Belgium or in, in, in Belgium? Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Get out of yes. here. Yeah. Really? What I'm talking about. Oh, absolutely, brother. That's and what I'm talking about. So this is one. When I went there, now with the, the mindset of someone that know, I used to work in the restaurant industry for so long. Uh-huh. So, for example, you can come there and you add some, the, what, what sucks in our community when people open restaurants, they don't have any sense of the service. Right? Um, they, don't have, they don't have the sense of the, you know, of that. Um, uh, the customers always always right type stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Pay attention to the customer. Mm-hmm. He's the king. You know, be mm-hmm. fast, be available, all of these mm-hmm. things. So when you come up and you build your restaurant, this is how you can, boom, come up wow. with something else. You know what I mean? Right. But it's still in the community though. You know, so you're creating that 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 business in, within the community. So I, I just thought it was amazing. That's dope. She's been doing it. She's on. She's on, she's in the business for like two decades right now. That's oh dope. wow, yeah. that uh, is dope. That's dope. See, that's, it, it is funny because like that's somebody we want on CEO Ken, and we would put her like bio or history so people know. Like, well, she's been out for twenty years. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. People don't want to feel like they're missing out on success. They want to be a part yeah. of success. Something yeah. like that. You want to be associated. Stable. She's stable. Her business are stable. Right. Yeah. That's great. That's that's crazy. I've never been a I've never been a Belgian, but it's like if I go, I, yeah. I have to stop there. Ma- right? Malu, check, 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 Google, put on YouTube. Celebrities go there. Damn. Yeah. Mer Malu yeah, needs no. to be on CEO Ken. You know? Yeah. This is Mer- yeah, she <laughs> yeah. That needs to be on CEO Ken. That's that's, dope. that's that's incredible. Um, I think yeah. uh, um, to to, to two, is there um like you said the goal um hopefully we have the website up by this year um and we'll try to get in contact with different Congolese businesses and also other Congolese businesses. You can get in contact with us, yeah. Instagram, Facebook. Or even, um, let me see here. What are you can email us at um, CEO Ken CEO K I N two four three at gmail dot com. I know Congolese Excellence got in contact with us. They are very interested in what we're trying to do and whatnot. Um, I have to get I have to um, email her um, email her back. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to like bridge the bridge the gap so people know in the community, like, hey, I have this. I, you know, I can I can go here or I can do this or how do I get into business? I know there was a couple of people at the first meeting. One of the questions was, how do I get into business? Because people don't actually know. People have these ideas, but they don't know how to take an idea on paper and you know make it um, take it to the next step. And that's our kind of like our purpose as well too. Or sometimes even to put it on the put it on paper, like actually plan it out and have a yeah. a plan and a structure to it. Yeah, and that's and that's another thing too. I think we're like sort of like fighting, like from CEO Ken and Bantu boys, like you know. I always talk about I, can, I always talk about confidence, but it's like you know you can't this this fearlessness. You can't be afraid. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. I one thing I've started to realize: people that are like making it, they just don't care. 
Yeah. You can't. Yeah. You can't yeah. care. You got to put it out there. If you know the opportunity, yeah. you got to go for it because you know that the what it, you know but the yeah. two, you played basketball and Julian, you played soccer, you know the next shot is going to go in. I don't care about the last shot. Yeah. You know said I missed the last shot. Okay, effort. The Definitely. next is going to go in. Yeah. That's the mentality you have to have. It actually yeah. makes you making you better. Right. Yeah. 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 You, you can't you can't limit yourself. You got to right. like I can do it even if I've never done it, but hey, you know what? I'll learn what I need to learn to uh, make it happen. Cause you know, it's, you know, once again, kind of like, you know, in my own research is discovering like some of the stuff that's like going on out there in the rest of the country, right. randomly, like somebody who follows us, whatever, like comments on one of our posts, oh, check out the Boston Congolese Gala. So, you know, I hit up them people, I'm talking to them. And, you know, turns out these people, they've been doing it for like four or five years, a gala each year, a uh, different charity, a uh, different uh, cause, whatever it is. Um, they've raised like thousands of dollars for different causes here and there. And when you look at like their, uh, like the, you know, videos and pictures and stuff like that, it's well put together. I think the last one, they headlined it with a performance by one of the Macomas, I think, uh, Natalie, Natalie Macoma. So they brought out like a big act to come even do it. And I'm like, wait, y'all been doing this for four or five years. Why is the first time I'm hearing about this? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm hot that this, you know, so you get mad, like, how come I don't know this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just there. And I, I talked to one of the people there. He was like, oh, yeah, here, New England area. There's like 5,000, 6,000 Congolese people out here. And I'm like, really? I had no idea there were that many of y'all out there. Yeah. New England? Wow. Yeah. Okay. And you I'll take... Well, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, bro. Go ahead. No, no. I, I was just going to say, and now you take that, and now it's like, okay, we're all over the place doing huge things, doing big things. And part of it, like having this platform, thank God, is that we can highlight people who are doing stuff like that so people can see like hey no somebody else is doing it your idea isn't that crazy mm -hmm. just do it that's great oh, that's amazing that, 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 that is a, that, that's incredible um but you know um to, to we ask this to every guest like before we end the the podcast what is your spirit animal my spirit animal. So I was yeah. gonna, I was gonna look up what the heck a spirit animal is. And you guys don't know what the heck a spirit animal. Is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, so like I tattooed think... on my chest. I gotta get a tattoo on my chest now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, right, right, no, right, no, right here, right here, no, right here on your forehead, so your dad can call you a failure. Like, oh, oh yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. No, um, you know, I, I think like me, I always say my spirit animal is like a, a black, a leopard or a black panther. Right? They're mysterious. Um, they're strong, but they can, they eat in trees. Like, I don't know. I always think that's cool. <laughs> the only cat that can eat in a tree. Uh. <laughs> All right. Spirit animal. My spirit animal, I think would be a cheetah. And, uh, I've always liked cheetahs. I don't know why when I was younger, I, I liked them because they were like long and lean. They could run really fast. And I was like, well, you know, they're not as strong as, you know, a, uh, a lion, right? A lion or a tiger. No, or even a leopard, um, yeah, pretty. Or weird. even a leopard, but they still have to be fearless. They have to be able to use what's God given to them, you know. And they have to go and and be as efficient as a lion and the leopard and the tiger. But they have to do it in their own ways. They got to find their way. So I always like, always like the cheetah. That the cheetah would be my spirit animal. Underrated cat too, by the way. It is very underrated. You know, I, I mean. About her. Head, head to head, you know, there's no comparison. Lion's going to kill the cheetah every day of the week. But, like, just think about how fast they run, the aerodynamics, their yeah. bone structure, the tail. The, they have to have, like, the, they have to breathe through their nose. Their lung capacities have to be. So it's amazing what a cheetah does. I think they can reach, like, to 75. Oh, yeah. Uh, speed, you know. 77 yeah. miles an hour. Right, exactly. I would say something. I love uh, that's a, that's a great animal. I love animals. So like side note, you know how like a cheetah is so lean and it runs so fast because it's not that strong. So it has to get its food quick before like the yep. lion, hyenas yep. or the leopard come and steal it. <laughs> but you know, you know how like the slowest cat is a hyena, but a hyena has the biggest heart. That's why it outruns its um its prey. Mm -hmm. You guys know that hyena is a cat though. Well, it's like a fusion of like a dog or something like that. It's like from like dog it's family. Hyena. No, no, you're right. It is. It's just a, it's just a fucking hyena, right? They're weird. <laughs> hyenas are weird. And you know, and you know, the acid in a hyena's stomach, it can. That's why it can digest hubs. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Big job. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, Crazy weirdos. 
you know the women have the penis, right? You know that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> wow, that, that's a lot. I, I wow. Yeah. That was a lot. That was a lot. Thanks for the information, though. <laughs> So I've got the positive, but yeah, 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 it's a whole thing. Because I love cats. That's why it's like, all oh, leopard and this, that. All that. All what about that. Julian? What's your, I never, Julian, I don't think you ever told us your spirit now. I don't know, bro. I have so many. I don't know. <laughs> this guy. I don't know. I, have I would say a tiger, yeah. The previous podcast, yeah. The, the I well, you know what? Patrick, <laughs> you, what is, <laughs> what's your spirit animal? For the, uh, mine, uh, what I would like it to be, um, it's it's kind of random. Peregrine falcon. Um, main reasons why they can fly like real fast. I think, and this is years ago. I, you read it, a book it when you're a kid. I think it said like 180 miles per hour, but I think that's when they dive. That's how fast they can go. Um, they're big birds. You know, it's a falcon, and I think they also eat other birds. I don't know what that says about me, but yeah, I just always like that 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 that, that bird, that animal. You know what? Apparently, you know, they're all over uh, downtown LA. Apparently. Really? Peregrine Falcons? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Interesting. Really? Interesting. Yep, that's what I heard. You know what's funny? I can see why you would pick a falcon because, or a bird, because a bird is an overseer. That's what you are. Ah, there you go. You, you flatter me. You flatter me. There we go. Thanks, <laughs> no, Junior. You know what? You guys can get that 10 cents. So, you know, I, I was being a little. <laughs> me and Julian have been working so hard. We're like, hey, boss, be- I'm hungry. Work some more. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Bilay ko back in the Congo is a vodou. It's a marabou. Look, marabou. Let, me you, like, let, me you, like, let me tell you something. When we go to Congo this summer, you guys watch it. Oh, I'm going to change that whole nation. No more peanut Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. I'm going coming in hot. Look here. So you leave that mwamba alone. You hear me? No, forget all that. But look, yeah, uh, Yapta 2, it was a pleasure having you on. This was the first of many. Um Yeah. You know, people that are, tell people Amazing. where they want to um, stay up to date with CEO Ken, where they can reach us. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram, CEO Ken. Yes, sir. Uh, hit us up there. And if you want to hit me up, you can look me up, Tatoon Toya, at Tatoon Toya on Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And Instagram is, and uh, CEO Ken on Facebook too. On look Facebook. us up on CEO Ken on Facebook, CEO Ken on, um, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, just look for, the updates coming our way, and we got are coming your way, and we have a lot of things on 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 the docket, and yeah. we're really excited to to get this going. Yeah, and that includes like future events, how to become a vendor, the website, oh, and oh, everything. I know everything is everybody. Just stay tight because you know the the Corona is just a it's just a it's just a short stop. You know yep. what I'm Not, you know what I mean. And um, yeah, thank you guys. And also, you can follow the Bantu Boys, Bantu Boys on Instagram. Like us on Facebook. Um, this will be on YouTube, so make sure you guys um, subscribe, comment, like. It's also we're on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher. Are we on TuneIn, Patrick? I'd have to. I'm not sure. We may be. We might. Know- be, we might be on um, on TuneIn, but at least Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and um, when you're on um, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, comment, share, like. We 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 respond to comments. So tell us what you like. Talk to us. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Talk yeah, to please us. Please don't please don't be shy. Or actually, tell us what you would like to see in the future. Maybe you want hey, if you want us to interview somebody in like food, I don't know. You let us know. Like you know, we're here to serve the people. We'll not serve you guys too much. You guys stay safe, you know, protect yourself, stay home. This coronavirus is no joke. I'm going to go to club bathroom right now. It's popping over there. <laughs> for sure, no, for but, sure. but thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next week. Uh, thank you, fam. Peace. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir.